uh, kind of our back this catalogs um, being uh, over the past, what, six seasons or so. Our most recent one off to this shoulder over here um, being the records, but our graphics seems pretty creative in putting those together. So I wanted to showcase those for everyone. Yeah, I loved it. I love the pride version of the logo that I saw online today. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Too. Yeah, they do a great job. They really do. Thank you. I figured this virtual backdrop was a little more exciting than the back of my bedroom wall. <laughs> You know, we, we kind of like seeing inside people's houses. Yeah, it's really yeah, yeah, for the voyeur, right? <laughs> a little voyeuristic, uh, you know, endeavor. Yeah, I well, it's that, usually full of books in our experience, right? Yeah, that too. Yeah, no, I'm I'm relegated to the bedroom because all the kids are back from college and they've taken my office space. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, here's Brad coming at you from a closet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the kids are taking over the house. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming to our first book break. We conceived of this as a way to connect booksellers with industry members and publishers in a year when we can't always do that. And since we have lots of virtual events and opportunities in this very resource rich industry, we decided to go with a half hour um, to go with a more of a, you know, I think that's plenty of time for us to get to know each other a little bit better and for Brad to tell us more about Blackstone. Uh, so this is Brad Simpson. He's in the sales force at Blackstone Publishing. Blackstone itself is located in Oregon, but Brad is in Kansas City, Missouri. And he is a sales rep for all of Meba's bookstore. So he is your person to go to. He will make sure you have all of his contact information during his presentation. Um, and if you haven't met him before, we're thrilled that you're meeting him now. He's going to go through his presentation. If you have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat all throughout. And we will also open it at the end for a few minutes for any questions or conversation or chatter as we see fit. So thank you everybody for attending. And Brad, please go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Carrie. I appreciate the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here. I hope everyone's okay and can can see that. Um, looks like it's good on my end. Um, I appreciate this. This is sort of an, an inaugural book break, which I'm really honored to be a part of. Um, I hope it goes well. I hope you enjoy the, the quick presentation. Um, found out that my mother had a little accident prior to logging in. She fell at an estate sale, so she's actually at the hospital. I think she broke her arm. I'm a little frazzled right now, but we'll try to do our best. Um, we're going straight to the hospital after this. So anyway, it uh, was a little un unexpected. I apologize ahead of time if, if I feel like a, I'm rushing things. Um, first of all, Blackstone, y'all probably are pretty familiar. We're an independently family owned uh, company uh, of premier audiobooks since the 80s. Um, we started our print line about six years ago. And that was specifically to work with the Indies, with our relationships, to enhance our relationship with the Indies and to work with you to offer print books. We got a really terrific stable of authors, especially if I think for such a short list that we publish, uh, they, they all have very richly diverse backgrounds. It's a good blend of genres. And we're always trying to stress quality over quantity when it comes to our content. Uh, and the more of these virtual presentations we do, the really the more traction we're gaining for our titles. So we really appreciate the support of the Indies uh, and in particular, you know, you guys online today. So thanks for coming. And speaking of titles, I'll go ahead and start off by sharing a few titles from the upcoming front list in the summer and fall. And then I'll just kind of mix it up with some other exciting things happening on the Blackstone front. All right. Well, first of all here, I'd like to talk about uh, the new book, River Sings Out by James Wade. It's coming out on sale here in a few days. Uh, James is the author of the successful debut published last summer, All Things Left Wild. It was a book the Austin Chronicle called Literary Lightning. Uh, this title was just announced last week as the winner of the 31st Annual Reading of the West Book Awards for debut fiction. And we're really thrilled to have uh, this talented young author uh, as among uh, the many authors on our stable. His latest book is another work of literary fiction, though this one is not set against a Western backdrop. Avoiding his abusive father, a 13-year-old boy comes across a girl named River who stumbles into his yard, injured and alone, she stole thousands of dollars worth of meth from her murderous drug dealing boyfriend, but she lost it somewhere in the Natchez River bottoms during her escape. And he agrees to help her find and sell the drugs so he can flee Texas. All the while, the two are being sought after by her angry boyfriend and a dangerous local drug kingpin known as the Thin Man. Throughout the story, they are forced to come to terms with the choices that they've made. This novel delves deep into the sinister world of the East Texas river bottoms, where oppressive poverty is pitted against the need to believe in something greater than the self. When asked why James decided to write this book, he explains, I wanted to write about the region that I grew up in, how beautiful it is, but how the circle of poverty is alive and well. 
Many folks, folks in East Texas, they don't really have the same opportunities to get into anything but trouble. Meth, oil, racism, gangs, dogfighting, all the bad stuff you hear about is in this book. But I also wanted to show that there's a lot of people that really don't have the same choices and the same opportunities as most of us do. It's all they've ever known. We worked with James in Dallas last March uh, when I'd taken my last commercial flight before the world shut down. And I'm telling you, this guy's got terrific riding chops and he's just a fantastic person on top of that. So I highly recommend this book. All right. All right, Sons of Valor. Um, this one is the first book in the tier one shared world series by Brian Andrews and Jeffrey Wilson, also published on June 8th. It's an action adventure uh, book. A Navy SEAL has been tasked to a new covert team of tier one SEALs, which is the most elite special operators in the world. They must safeguard America and stay a step ahead of its adversaries after evidence of a troubling link between illicit chimes, Chinese arms sales and an attack on the US military convoy in Afghanistan. Brian is a, na native, a US Navy veteran He's a park leadership fellow and a former submarine officer with a psychology degree from Vanderbilt. Also has an MBA from Cornell. And Jeffrey has worked as an actor, firefighter, paramedic, jet pilot, and diving instructor, as well as a vascular trauma surgeon. So talk about a well-rounded duo. Uh, you can kind of see how these two put their heads together for a thrilling series. All right, Breeder. This one is a debut by Honey Von Ridgwick, published in July. It's a YA dystopian sci-fi thriller about the world of the corporation, where every life is valued in units and nearly everyone is expendable, and especially if you're a female, or as they call it, a breeder. They're born into debt and can only accrue units, which is their form of currency, through reproduction. As a pair of young teens' friendship grows closer, one of them shares a secret. She is part of the response, an uprising to overthrow the corporation. The two one day carelessly travel into zone B for a day of adventure, which threatens to lead to the other's true identity, something that she does not want to be revealed. This author is a writer, a lawyer, an academic, and Breeder is her debut. She's the senior lecturer in the facility of law near her home at the University of Technology in Sydney, Australia, where her research focuses on intersections between law, technology, and culture. Kirkus calls Breeder a short, fast-paced novel set in a futuristic yet terrifyingly familiar world, an absorbing tale of survival in a post-apocalyptic future. All right, next one I want to talk about is Butcher Pin Road. This is part of the Bill Metabi and Hannah Bond mystery series, book number three by Chris Lackey. It's a mystery detective thriller based in Oklahoma's Big Rock Prairie. As a deaf boy finds a body in a creek, and the local county deputy and police sergeant find a crime scene, nothing just seems to fit. The mystery only intensifies as they scour the creekside brush, then hit the road for Texas for a widening search for the killer. As Sergeant Maytubby and Deputy Bond try to protect the deaf boy and his mother from those in the crime ring who want all witnesses to disappear, an improbable ally materializes from the prairie oak thickets, and he's wielding a monstrous shotgun. I think you guys know where this one's going. <laughs> Chris is the author of two previous books from the mystery series. He's a USA Today bestselling author of Nails Crossing and its sequel, Greasy Bend, which was long listed for the reader, uh, the Reading the West Book Award. He currently lives in Norman, Oklahoma. Every Man by M. Shelley Connor. This one's published on July 20th. Uh, a work of literary fiction. It's written with blade sharp intelligence and clarity and poetic precision. This debut novel gives readers an unforgettable heroine to take their journey with. Eve Mann arrives in ideal Georgia in 1972, looking for answers about the mother who died giving birth to her. She's seeking to discover her identity, her name, her people, and her home. Her questions and longing launch a multi-generational story that sprawls back to the turn of the 20th century. Peopled by rebellious black women straining against the yoke of convention, and designated identities determined to be free. Eve will eventually come to learn the gift of her past and a reimagined present that gives meaning to her life. A Chicago native, this author spent her summers bouncing between her grandmother's place in Memphis and relatives in Los Angeles and throughout the Midwest. 
She received a PhD from the University of Illinois in Chicago and is currently an assistant professor of creative writing at the University of Central Arkansas. The Second Season by Emily Adrian. This one published July, July 27th. Uh, it's a work of contemporary women's fiction about a fiercely determined woman who is forced to choose between her career in sports broadcasting and motherhood. Ruth starred for Georgetown basketball back in her college days until she injured her knee, married her coach, and found a new career calling games on the radio. 20 years later, she's now, she and her ex-husband, now ex-husband, are the two of the most famous sports broadcasters in, in media. And when he decides to retire from the announcer's booth, Ruth goes after the job. But one night in a deserted locker room at halftime during the NBA finals, Ruth makes a shocking discovery that shatters her vision of the future. And she's instantly torn between the two things she's always wanted most, the game and motherhood. PW just gave this book a great review, adding even the sports averse will be caught up in this drama. Emily brings to life the obsessions, emotions, and drama of fandom, of motherhood, marriage, and ambition. And she recently made a big splash with her debut novel, Everything Here is Under Control, last year. I can tell you that she is a wildly entertaining read and laugh out loud funny, I, I can add. Helldivers 8, King of the Wastes. This is uh, book eight in Nicholas Sandberry Smith's uh, Helldiver series, published uh, September 14th. If you couldn't tell by the cover artwork, yes, it is a sci-fi <laughs> dystopian. Um, the adventures continue from this New York Times bestselling author in the post-apocalyptic firestorm by the brave group of men and women who risked their lives to save humanity, the Helldivers. These books are scorching page turners that literally do not allow readers to set it down even for a minute on the nightstand to take a breath. They are very fast reads. Uh, the diving missions from the ship to the wastelands never stops and sci-fi fans will literally consume this series. Nick authors several other sci-fi series, uh, most recently The Sons of War, which you can see on the screen. Uh, he's also a triathlon runner uh, and he used to work for the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management and Disaster Planning before he became an author. So uh, enough said there. The guy knows his stuff about uh, apocalypse, apocalyptic events. And uh, he's a very, very busy, prolific writer. I don't, don't have any idea where the guy has time, knows, you know, has time when to sleep. Uh, he's always on the go. But uh, anyway, he currently lives in Des Moines, Iowa with his wife and young daughter. This is a fun one I'm excited to present. It's, this one's called Trailer Park Trickster, um, the follow-up to White Trash Warlock. This guy hits it out of the park with his titles. I, I, I gotta say, he's very entertaining. Uh, it's part of the Adam Binder series. It's book number two from David R. Slayton coming in October. Um, it, it's of course a fantasy, uh, as you could probably tell by the cover art. Um, returning to Guthrie, Oklahoma, which is actually the birthplace of the author, uh, for the funeral of his mysterious and beloved aunt, Adam Binder once again finds himself in the path of deadly magic when a dark druid begins to prey on members of his family. It all seems linked to the death of Adam's father many years ago, a man who may have somehow survived as a warlock. Adam learns more about his family and his troubled history than he ever bargained for, and he finally comes face to face with the warlock he has vowed to stop. <clears throat> These are really fun reads, <clears throat> uh, written in magical realism, with really very real, if not even underprivileged characters that typically aren't recognized in the fantasy genre, he does a great job of bringing them to life. Uh, David now lives in Denver with his partner, and in 2015, he founded Trick or Treat, which is an annual initiative that he took on to give out books and candy to children on Halloween, as well as to uplift left, lesser known authors uh, or those from marginalized backgrounds, so a very noble cause. We really love David. Okay, and of course, you knew I was going to present this one, uh, No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. This one comes out in September. The author's wildly successful debut novel, The Lesson, was recently optioned for a television series by AMC. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I should be a little bit non-biased, but that was one of the best books I've read since joining Blackstone. Just fantastic. Um, no Gods, No Monsters was also included in Forbes magazine's 10 most anticip anticipated books of 2021, according to independent booksellers. One October morning, a woman gets the news that her brother was shot and killed by Boston cops. But what looks like a case of police brutality soon reveals something much stranger. Monsters are real, and they want everyone to know about it. 
As creatures from myth and legend come out of the shadows seeking safety through visibility, their emergence will set off a chain of seemingly unrelated events. Members of a local werewolf pack are threatened into silence. A professor follows a missing friend's trail of breadcrumbs to a mysterious secret society. And a young boy with unique ability seeks refuge in a pro-monster organization. Meanwhile, more people start disappearing, suicides and hate crimes increase, and, pro and protests erupt globally, both for and against the monsters. But at the center is a mystery that no one thinks to ask. I mean, why now? What has frightened these monsters out of the dark? Well, the world's soon going to find out. Booksellers, please consider nominating this title for the September Indie Next list. Uh, voting deadline is July 7th. I think you will find it's well-deserved. I'd be happy to send a galley out to anybody who'd like it. Okay, kind of a new endeavor from Blackstone is large print. Uh, we're going to be doing Falling by TJ Newman uh, next month. Simon and Schuster, Su Simon and Schuster actually have the rights to the hard copy and uh, trade paperback, but we acquired the large print rights. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. This is a terroristic thriller. You just boarded a flight to New York. There's 143 passengers on board. What you don't know is that 30 minutes before the flight, your pilot's family was kidnapped. For his family to live, everyone on the plane must die. The only way the family will survive is if the pilot follows his orders and crashes the plane. Enjoy your flight. This book has been buzzing everywhere, pulling quotes from several notable authors, including Don Winslow, who says it's stunning and relentless. This is the jaws of 35,000 feet. James Patterson, falling is the best kind of a thriller, nonstop, totally authentic, suspense. Lee Child writes, amazing, intense, suspenseful, shocks and scares, chilling. And Janet Ivanovich adds, the perfect summer thriller, relentlessly paced and unforgettable. Blackstone will actively be seeking to acquire more books that fall into this popular category of large print that sometimes is overlooked in the format, which currently serves, you know, not mostly, but oftentimes just kind of your cozies, mysteries, your westerns, and your blockbusters. So we're going to try to sort of hit that uh, sweet spot in between. All of these titles can be found in our print uh, or our spring and fall 21 catalogs on Edelweiss. And I will share my contact information at the end of the presentation, as well as send a follow-up email to the attendees. Uh, Cause I think um, Carrie and Kate, they're gonna be sending me the links or the uh, email addresses. So everybody's gonna get that information soon. Blackstone has terrific terms uh, for ordering direct from publishers. I, I don't know if anybody tops this. This is pretty fantastic. We give 50% standard terms. Uh, that can be included through a lot of indie specific specials. We can, uh, we do like first time orders, new accounts, uh, promotions, book clubs get 55%. So our terms, are, I think, are fantastic and very generous. Free shipping, no minimum ordering requirements at any time. You can order one book or, or, or a dozen. And of course, everything is uh, fully returnable for credit as well. All right, now on to the mixed bag part. Uh, I hope this is fun for you. Um, we are doing a co-op. Uh, we have co-op funds available. We're really kind of expanding our co-op outreach. Uh, they're very simple. They don't require filing complicated claim forms to receive. We want to keep everything pretty straightforward. Uh, so we started focusing more on co-ops, of course, to promote direct ordering through the publisher, which in turn also helps support bookstores with shared advertising, advertising costs, uh, vastly improved margins, and also reducing unnecessary fulfillment issues that you might be experiencing through your distributor. I, I won't go into stories, but I've ran into a few of those recently myself. Uh, so if you're interested in setting up a dedicated Blackstone bookshelf display in your store that focuses on titles or genres that appeal to your community, we'd really love to partner with you. Uh, be more than happy to provide a curated list of books from our back list and front list tailored to your specifications. In addition to that, uh, we could provide you with digital assets, um, title related or, or general swag that we have on hand, maybe a book plate, signed copies, anything we've got. We, we'd love to be able to share that. T-shirts, all kinds of fun things. Um, and we also will offer co-ops for new bookstores, first-time orders in the form of increased discounts, as I mentioned earlier, um, as well as some other opportunities to receive deep discounts or, or through invoice credits. Um, you know, to include more publisher driven arrangements such as lead title merchandising uh, and author events that you might have at your store. 
We'll also soon plan to broaden this outreach to include growth or pool co-ops for stores that uh, increase their annual ordering as we get really more established in the marketplace. So just a couple of neat things coming your way. And I thought you might like to see this too. It's um, just a short slide of some of the, a few of the shelf displays and table displays that we've done in, you know, in and around the area with several booksellers. Um, they've had tremendous success with the sell-through. Also shows some of the swag we've given away too. So um, these are fun. Let me know if you're interested. I'd love to put a list together for you. All right, now as, uh, as we all kind of continue to evolve in a more virtual world, Blackstone is highly committed to supporting and growing uh, the popularity of online book club, uh, book discussion groups by offering, as I mentioned earlier, 55% off any title, all titles pub, uh, purchased specifically for your book clubs. And we'll also provide you too with a couple of free download cards from our e-content platform uh, downpour if you have a member or two of the book club that is struggling and can't afford to purchase the books. So you can let us know and we'd be happy to send that to you as well. And Blackstone offers deeper discounts, 55% for all orders of an entire book series. Now this is for any physical format, uh, audio or uh, print. So if you're ordering you know, the trade paperback and you can sort of intermix them from the hardcover to the paperback to the audiobook, but if you order the full series, it's 55% through us and free shipping. Long overdue. Uh, <laughs> we're in the process of launching a totally rebuilt website from the ground up. This is going to offer a lot more and much more robust functionality and a user-friendly interface, which will include more advanced searching and browsing options, uh, several categorized carousels such as new releases, popular titles, spotlight series, spotlights, author features, editors, picks, etc. Uh, and you'll also be able to view, uh, you know, our specials, your ordering history, your billing and shipping status. Uh, it, basically, it'll streamline your workflow by creating a really quick, easy way to just build carts and place orders with a few clicks. So uh, this is something I've personally been really excited for for a long time. So come in your way this summer. All right, very exciting news on the corporate front. Um, this is cool. Blackstone just made a seven-figure investment in the purchasing of a new commercial printer. Basically, it's taking up half our warehouse. The thing is huge. And we're already printing our own books. Uh, it's a huge deal, really, for several reasons. The obvious being that it's our commitment to the indie print book market that enables us to utilize our print-on-demand model, ensuring the strictest quality control measures are met for binding and our beautiful cover artwork. Uh, also, 100% fulfillment with every title all the time. There won't be an issue there. Uh, of course, on the back end, we'll be able to control costs better by printing our own galleys, marketing materials, and we'll probably even lease it out for small press publishers to do their printing as well. Uh, but more specific uh, benefit to the bookstore is that we can now make it more feasible to offer signed pre-order copies really on practically all of our titles through tip sheets. Uh, which in essence, we will send the author a quantity of pages to sign and return to us instead of, instead of having to pay for shipping to double ship, you know, the entire book back and forth to the residents and back. So it's just going to enable us to have much, much more options, you know, on that front. And of course, we'll have more uh, controls in creating and customizing exclusive dust jacket covers. You know, if you have a large, you know, event, an author event, maybe we can put the bookstore logo on it. Uh, we've got full control and capacity to do things like that and other cool stuff. So we're really excited for this. I think it's going to be a neat venture. And I've got a really quick 15 second clip that I'd like to share. I hope it translates over through the Zoom. I think we're okay here. Um, yeah, there it is. Brad, you might have to switch with which screen you're sharing with us for us to see it. We see just your PowerPoint, not the whole computer. You know what? That's true. Let me go back and share that.
And if you want, Brad, I can just stop your sharing. We can restart it on the screen that you need. Are we, are we back? Not yet. Oh, we got there. No, you okay. just got there. Oh, go back. I love technology, huh? Am I not there? <laughs> you got there can for you, a moment. You can't see the PowerPoint from here. Okay. How about now? No. No, you got no, it. we got it. That's the one. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, you probably should have done a uh, should have done a, a run through, huh? Um, but we're back on the printer screen. It looks like, right? Nope. We're not. We're not on the. Okay, we're on the PowerPoint now. There we go. Okay, no. I think there's a little delay. That's what got us. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Well, what you've all been waiting for, really, I think, is is this one. <laughs> uh, we're doing a giveaway. Uh, I, I think this is uh, something that you know. I we definitely thought long and hard about this. We want to, you know, kind of give away the bank here. But you know, I, I've got email addresses I'll be getting from uh, Carrie and Kate. And what I'll do is I'll send everyone an email with a follow up on some assets and some other things about the titles, maybe a collection through Edelweiss of what was discussed today. Um, but we have, I think I lost my PowerPoint too. No, uh, I just stopped you because at this point we weren't seeing anything helpful. <laughs> okay. We seeing... <laughs> well, I will, I will, I, I, that's fine. No, it's fine. You can go back to the screen. Um, so we'd like to give away a, a free tote and a signed copy of one of the books presented today, as well as some really cool swag to everybody attending today. So look out for that. I'll send an email and maybe get everyone's address through that. Um, and just really like to open it up to a little Q and A. If anybody's got questions, um, things they want to go over. I'll try to answer them. If I can't, I'll find the answer for you. Uh, so I'd like to just open that, this up right now for, for that. There's been a lot of love shared for your generous terms. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm yeah, amazed that it just kept getting better and better as you went through your presentation. <laughs> well, we just did Independent Bookstore Day, a 60% across the board sale for one day. That was the biggie. Uh, I think hopefully a lot of people were able to take advantage of that. But on the flip side, everyone was so busy that day, too. So uh, maybe the next time we'll extend that to two days <laughs> instead of just the one. Uh, but thanks for that. Are there any other questions? People are really loving competitive grieving. Good, good. That's, you know, they knocked it out of the park with that cover artwork. And uh, they're, you know, uh, She's a fantastic author too. Um, not a debut from my understanding. I think she's done some other work before, but I've read a little bit about that. I've read a little bit about the, the first uh, few chapters of that book and boy, she's got some, I mean, she's a fun, fun read. Um, if you like the morose, the dark humor, the twisted and, 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 and the grieving and the, and the drama and the and bit of a love story there too. It's a very kind of mixed hybrid a uh, genre bender of a, of a title, but you know, the, the, the covers, the cover's fantastic. It's just, it just draws people. Carrie's talking, but she's muted. Yeah, Carrie, but I think you're muted. <laughs> we had one more question come in, which is, can you talk a bit about the rebel nun? Um, Marge, how do you say that author's name? I'm gonna mispronounce it terribly. Um, Marge we'll Shalir. be at Alice's store in September, yes. Yeah, Marsha Lear. Yeah, that one, um, trying to think when the on sale date of that one just came out. It was recent. I'm thinking that uh, it was March. But um, yeah, it's historical fiction, kind of medieval age. Um, you know, it's based on the story of, of, of Clot Clotilde. Clotilde. I, I really still have problems pronouncing that name. The daughter of, of a king and concubine who leads a rebellion nun against uh, the misogyny and patriarchy of the church. So uh, but Marge has done a fantastic job promoting this book. I don't know if you said that she has an event coming up um, with one of the bookstores, but but she is she is very passionate. She's great to talk to. She's a good speaker. She's uh, BuzzFeed announced this one as winner 2020, 2021 historical fiction novels is one of their uh, most anticipated books. So, I mean, this one's something that we're, we were really excited for, and I think it's had quite a bit of success. Looking forward to her, her next her next book, too. I mean, she just, uh, she does a good job, but it, was this a, an event coming up soon? Uh, so yeah, was... Alice just made note in the chat that they have an event scheduled at their store in September. You'll have a lot of fun with her. Yeah, she's very passionate, very passionate author, but she does a great job. 
Yeah. One I haven't read. I, I hate to admit these things. You know, there's so <laughs> there's so many books and so little time. <laughs> so so so. Yeah, you can feel the pain. <laughs> Well, we should start wrapping up. I apologize because there's a party going on next to my house and that's why I was going off and on mute and why I wasn't talking at the right time. So there's some music. We had music for our outro. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you everyone for coming to join us. Brad, I wanted to just underscore the ways to stay in touch with you are on email for sure. I believe you also have a newsletter. I do. I and do. can I share the link to your Facebook? Please do, yeah, please do. Brad's bookshelf. Um, Brad's bookshelf, and I'm at brad.simpson at blackstoneaudio, all one word, dot com. Uh, reach out to me if you need uh, anything, galley requests, orders, if you'd like to do a bookshelf. Uh, if you have questions, you know, things that I can or can't answer, I'll find the answer for you. And uh, so I'm your go-to to, for pretty much all things Blackstone at this point. And uh, it's been a real pleasure. I appreciate the time. Uh, I can't wait to get out there as just as I was getting hired up by Blackstone about a year and a half ago, COVID hit, haven't been able to get on the road. Um, you guys are all so close to me within driving distance that I'll definitely make a, uh, a few road trips here in the hopefully near future, maybe even by summertime to see some of you. So uh, please reach out though, if you're interested in anything from us at all. Thank you so much, Brad. You now have a group of booksellers rooting for your mom. Send some <laughs> Thank you guys. On okay. to the hospital. <laughs> have a good Bye. one. Thank you.